When creating websites, you're going to want to include images because they enhance your website in so many ways and make it so much more interesting to your users. It's important that you understand how to optimize images so that you're serving up images that are not taking up any additional file size. I'm going to be discussing some of the various image formats that you can use on the web, and I'll be demonstrating how to optimize these using Photoshop. You can obviously use other applications to optimize your web graphics. You're going to need to have some sort of bitmap editor where you can reduce the file size and if necessary make any additional edits that you're going to want to perform on the images. Photoshop has some excellent techniques for creating and optimizing web use. What I'm going to be showing you in this particular lecture is how you can use the export and save for the web feature. If you are using the current version of Photoshop, I'm using Photoshop CC 2017, you can use File, Export, and you can do the Save for the Web, which in this version of Photoshop is listed as a legacy method of saving for the web. I'm going to go ahead and click the Save for the Web. When I do this, it's going to open up the Save for the Web dialog box. There's a lot going on in this dialog box. The first area that I'd like to introduce you to is the tabs up the top. These are going to allow you to see your original image, what the image looks like optimized with these settings, a two-up view which will allow you to compare your original to the optimized settings, and then a four-up view where you can further compare the original to various optimization settings. Over here on the right is where you can choose the image type that you'd like to save for. So you have several presets that are built into the save for the web and then you can customize these as well. Once you've made a choice and set one of these, you will get some sub options. It depends on the file type, the options that you're going to be greeted with. Here I've chosen JPEG, so I have options for modifying a JPEG. We'll look more at these in detail in another movie. You can also choose to convert your image to different color spaces and you can modify these settings here. The color table option is only available if you choose GIF or ping files and then you can choose the colors and again we'll talk more about this. You can also augment the image size. So currently this image has a size of 800 by 479. If I wanted to reduce the size and make it half as big, I can reduce the width and then the height because these are linked is going to update and change here as well. You can also reduce this by percentage or you can choose your type of resampling algorithm that you want to use when reducing or increasing the size. It is possible to create animated GIFs here if your file is set up to do so. The other thing that I want to call your attention to is each of the little previews, if you're in the 4-up or the 2-up mode anyways, are going to show you the file type, the projected file size, and it'll give you a target download time on a specified device. So right now it's saying that if this is a GIF saved with these colors, 64 colors, it's going to take up 232 kilobytes and it'll take 43 seconds to load on a 56k modem. Now obviously people aren't using 56k modems very often, so you can increase the download size specifications here and target other options. So if I bring this up to a 768 kilobytes per second cable DSL modem, you can see how it's going to reduce the load time down significantly. When you're happy with your results, you'll click save and then you can go about saving the optimized image. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and click cancel and we'll talk more about these specific settings in another video.